Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It sure is a beautiful day and it's even nicer in the greenhouse here. My greenhouse sure is turning green now. Everything's growing and looking really nice. I've got a lot of the maples out here on the end bench. They actually need a little bit of pruning already. So that's what I'm going to start off today with a little bit of pruning on the maples. I'm going to start today with my silver maple forest. I picked these seeds out of midair. They were falling from the tree down the street, planted them, and I think they're about, they're at least five years old now. And you can see they're just starting to get some bark on the trunk now. It's starting to kind of get that maple look to the trunks. And that'll just keep improving as the trees get older. It'll start kind of cracking and flaking and look more like a silver maple. Up top you can see that the new leaves coming out are sort of a reddish orange color. And as they mature a bit they turn a nice green color. In fall they uh, turn various shades of yellow and orange. They look quite nice. All these trees are from the same parent tree. And you can see they have quite a variety of leaf shapes. This one is more like sort of a trident maple, has a lot of the three lobes. Uh, the one down here is similar, but a little more deeply recessed the uh, sinuses on the leaf. Over here I have a maple. I don't know where this came from, but it has a real nice leaf on it. If you look at the shape of that leaf. I don't know if you can see that in the light there. Yeah, beautiful leaves on this maple. Really nicely shaped. So it's, it's amazing the variety you get. When all the seeds are from the parent tree, all the different leaf shapes you can get from its seeds. Before I give the leaves their first pruning or pinching, I'm going to weed the planting as step number one. This is a really good time of the year to pull these weeds out before they get too strong and deeply rooted. So you just grab them by the base and pull them out by the roots. Now it's looking pretty good now. I'll keep my eye out for more weeds popping up over the summer. I just keep pulling them out when I notice them trying to keep this planting weed free. Here is a look at the silver maple forest and you can see it's growing really well. It looks good and healthy. The leaves look really nice. There is one shoot up top here, right here, that is growing with a lot more vigor than all the others. I would like to prune the top of that off to kind of balance the vigor on the tree so it's growing a little more evenly. So it kind of grows out evenly rather than one shoot up here taking off and becoming really strong. My silver maples are growing in a forest and I don't want one tree to get really thick compared to the rest. I want to kind of grow them equally in proportion, keeping them tall, slender, forest style trees. If this tree, the strongest tree of the leader growing up here was a specimen tree by itself in a pot, I may want to grow a sacrifice leader, you know, really tall and then prune it off at the end of summer to help thicken up the base and provide a lot of strength and get that root system growing. But not in this case because they are growing in a forest and it's part of a group. I want to kind of grow them out equally. That's why I'm going to prune this tall leader off the top. All right, here I go. I wouldn't say this is a big cut, but it's kind of an important cut. I'm going to prune it. Way back down here is the first set of leaves going to the left and the right. The next set comes to the front and the back. And on this tree, because this leader, I don't know if you can see it here, let me show you a close up. Here is a look at that leader and you can see the branch comes up and the leader is going in towards the center of the tree. It's not fanning out. So I'm wondering if I want to keep that at all and instead grow one of these side shoots as the main leader of the tree. Yeah, I'm thinking of removing that entirely and I think I will. So this leader is just kind of growing the wrong direction. Instead of fanning out from the tree, 
is kind of crossing the center. So I'm going to take it back to a better leader, which is back here. So here I go. I guess this is a fairly big cut now. So here I go, just like that. So you can see the woody part I took off. That improves the main tree now. I noticed on the trunk, there looks to be clumps of eggs and I think it's from a gypsy moth. That's what it looks like to me. I'll show you a close up of it. On the trunk in the sun there, if you look up here, you can see sort of uh, mottled white patches on the trunk and I think those are eggs. So if I get my scissors and I kind of scrape them, they come off. So I'm thinking that's some kind of eggs on the trunk. I'm also thinking I better get rid of them because whatever's on there will probably eat the leaves of this tree. I've got my scissors and I'll scrape down the trunks and then I'll spray it with my soap and water solution here. Now I have to be careful with this soap and water that I don't spray it on these young leaves. These leaves haven't hardened off yet. They're very tender. And if you go spraying soap and water on them, it could cause them to curl up and die off because the soap will just attack those fresh young leaves. All right, I'm coming in here with the scissors and just scraping away. At first I thought it was lichen growing on the side. And I thought, no, it doesn't look like lichen. It looks more like patches of eggs. Because you can see the little individual little egg bumps. So it definitely isn't lichen. So here's a close-up look at those eggs on the side of the trunk here. So I'm just scraping them off. You can see them here and here. Yeah, they're definitely, definitely not lichen. So I have never seen these before on my trees. So I'm not exactly sure what they are. I'll look it up when I get inside, but... I'm pretty sure it's not good. Okay, so next I'll get my soap and water. Just give that a spray. Again, not spraying my leaves. So that should kill any insects if they make it out from my scraping operation. That is it for the silver maple forest. I did some weeding, a little bit of pruning, and I got rid of those funny egg looking things on the trunks. The next maple I'll be working on today is this red maple that grew in the front garden all by itself. And I kind of pruned it up in the front garden and eventually repotted it into a bonsai pot and continued its training as a bonsai. It has a very interesting trunk. There is a kind of a split on the trunk. I'll show you that. So right in here on the trunk, there's a split and I don't know if it was like insect damage or if a branch died off there and it's healed over or it cracked in the winter from cold. There's a lot of possibilities. There's another little split down below it here. So I, I don't know what caused that. Um, I did remove a branch on the other side here. Here's the other side where that branch was removed. You can see it's healed, smoothed over. So it's looking quite nice. But yeah, that, that crack in there is very interesting. I'm not sure. It does look like there was a branch in there. Or something. I'm going to spray it with soap and water just as a preventative measure in case there is an insect or something burrowing in there. So there it's had some soap and water in there. I did that last year just as a precaution too and it didn't seem to get any worse. It seems to be healing actually. My worst fear is that it's some kind of uh, disease on the tree. I've seen maples in nature where they get kind of a Ah, on the trunk they get like this type of a look and it just never heals it uh, even after years and years it just kind of mutates and grows burls around it and it never heals properly so I'll keep my eyes on it if it's a problem well we'll rethink the tree you can always chop it off lower down or something 
but I don't think it'll be a problem. So uh, yeah, a very interesting tree. I checked it over. I didn't see any insect problems on the tree. All the leaves look good. The tree is growing strongly and I'm not going to prune it yet. You can see on this branch, it has a set of leaves down here, another set here, another set here, and it's developing more at the tip. I'm going to let these uh, new shoots harden off. So in uh, maybe early July, they should be hardened off. Then I'll prune the tree back and I should get a second flush of growth. And the new leaves should come in a little more compact and the leaves should be smaller because the tree will be less vigorous in midsummer. I should also get nicer fall colors from that operation. So for now, I'm just going to let the tree grow, get super healthy, getting it ready for that pruning, that mid or early summer pruning. The next trees were grown from seed by Rosie in the KW Club and she gave me two young seedlings. And I've been growing them ever since and they're doing really well. And I believe they're Ammer Maples. Uh, the leaves are getting some variegation on them. Uh, you can see some almost white fringes to them. And yeah, that's interesting. I've never seen that before. It seems to be all over. It seems to be healthy otherwise, the leaf. Yeah, very interesting. Um, this one I could prune. It is starting to get, again, you know, I've got one, two, maybe three or four shoots that are really extending much more than the rest. So my intended style for this tree was sort of a broom style. So I think I've got to get the balance back under control. So let's have a look at the basic structure of the tree. So here I am looking at the structure and you can see it's a bit of a mess. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe eight branches all growing from one spot, which is very typical of a broom style maple. However, I, I'm sure there's some that can be eliminated. I'm just checking to see if there are some. So this one, there's some that have died off. So this one is dead. So I'm going to prune it right off. You can see there's no growth on that one at all. This one over to this side is also dead. There's no growth on that at all. So that's gone. I'm checking this one. This one is also dead here, so I'm taking that one off. And I'll clean this up later on. I've got two branches, one above each other here. I'm going to take off the lowest one. Like that, keeping this one. Uh, I think all the other branches are alive. Yeah. Okay, so I, I've got a bit of a knob here. I'm going to clean that up. So I will come in with the branch cutters here. Clean that up like that. So that makes a nice, a ah, bit of a better transition in that area. Now I have, this one branch kind of grows towards the inside and then goes vertical. It's a bit strange looking. I'm thinking about taking this whole side off the tree and growing this as the leader. It's just so awkward looking the way these branches are growing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this whole side of this tree off here. So here I go, big cut coming up, like that, taking off that whole side of the tree there. I think that'll be good. Once that grows, it'll heal over that cut nicely. I have a little shoot on the trunk here that's growing out. I don't want that, so I'll take that out. So now, you know, this is looking a little better. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's better. So this one, there's a dead top on here. I'll take that off. Just a stub. Um, so that gets everything down to living branches that are uh, flowing a little better. 
Here I've got a trident. I've got three branches coming from one spot. So I've got to pick one to eliminate. And this one is kind of growing over top of this other one here. So I think this would be the one to get rid of. I think I am going to take the front one off. That's was my initial thought, so that's the one I'm going to take off. Like that. So there'll be a lot more structural work on this tree as it uh, grows into the future, that's for sure. It's definitely... The primary branch structure is not set in stone at this point in time. Anything could happen in the future. So next, I think my next operation is just to prune back the growth a bit to kind of equalize the vigor. You can see this central leader isn't that vigorous, whereas this one is a little more vigorous and the back one is very vigorous. So let's, let's prune that up next. Okay, here I go. I'm going to prune this one back to here, taking the top off. I'll take a bit off this one and a bit off this one. That kind of balances the vigor a bit on the tree. My other tree here, the smaller one, let's go in and look at the structure of that one. So here is the tree and I have, again, one, two, three, four, five branches all growing from one spot on that tree. I don't want that. I'm going to eliminate the one coming out the front. There's one off, but I'm an eye poker branch. I'm going to I'm going to eliminate the one off to the side here, keeping my vertical one and this one, and I'm going to remove the back one. So now I'm dividing from one into two here, and the tree's looking good. I like the trunk, it's getting some bark and character to it. There's some buds here that might come out now that it's getting more light. We'll see. I may keep the one coming off here. It's a little lower than this junction here, so it might be fine. Other than that, I think it's all looking good. I'm wondering on this original tree here if I should take off this one branch. Let's have a look at it again. I don't really like this branch. It doesn't flow. You can see, if you check the flow lines, it goes up the trunk. Flows nicely into this branch, flows nicely into this branch. This one is kind of on the inside of a curve. It's 290 degrees to the trunk, so I'm going to remove it. Like that. I think that improves the flow of the basic trunk. I think this is something that I can develop in the future into a nice tree. So I think that's an improvement. Okay, so that takes care of these maples. Now, there are a lot of weeds in this pot. I'll show you that. So unfortunately, this is not moss. It's that weed. And I've got liverwort in here. Two of the things I dislike the most. Liverwort and these star weeds or Irish moss. So I'm going to try and pull it out. I'll do the best I can. I know I won't be that successful. And I may top dress it with fresh soil. Maybe that'll suppress the weeds a bit. I'll try that approach. And remember my saying in bonsai, you know you have too many trees if your trees are full of weeds. If you don't have time to weed them, then you have too many trees. And I have too many trees. I know I do. I finished the weeding on the trees. It took the soil layer down quite a bit because I pulled out a lot of soil with the weeds. But there's still all, kind of, all kinds of roots from the weeds and the liverwort in the soil here. And I'm thinking it's probably just going to re-green up again with weeds. Look at all those roots from weeds. So what I'm thinking is to do a, a bare root repotting getting it in fresh soil, just getting rid of all this soil. Doing no root pruning at all, just a, a bare root repotting. And we'll see how the trees do. Theoretically, if I don't touch the roots, I get them in fresh soil, they should just continue to grow like nothing ever happened. And maybe even grow better because it won't be full of weeds. So let's, let's do that approach. Let's uh, 
try bare rooting them, put them in fresh bonsai soil, and see if the trees live. I've got my tray out. I'm all ready to do this bare rooting. So let me get the trees out of the pot. Here I go, lifting up like that. So you can see the mat of roots on the bottom of the pot, and I don't know if those are weeds or if it's uh, roots off the maples. I have a feeling it's more weeds than maple roots. So I'm going to start combing out the soil, exposing the roots, bare rooting the trees. All right, here I go with my raking out of the root system. So yeah, theoretically, if I don't disturb you know, if I'm not pruning the roots on the maple, this shouldn't hurt them and they should recover very quickly and begin growing. At least that's my theory anyway. Now I will, you know, as I'm raking, you can see how fine I think these roots are from the maple. I will try not to tear too many, but I'm sure I will. I've already, you know, torn off a few as I'm combing. But I think it'll be okay. I'm going to keep as many as I can. The only ones that I'll kind of be combing out are the ones that aren't radial. So reducing the top of the trees will also help this operation because, you know, I've reduced the top of the trees so the root system doesn't have to do as much work supporting all those leaves that were up top. Now I may also put these trees in individual pots. There's no point me growing them together in a single pot. They are each their own tree, I think. So I'll try and find a pot to grow them separately. Okay, I think that tree is ready for washing the roots. Let me get my other one ready here. Okay. Ready to wash the roots now. All right, into the water. There you go. That's looking good. I think this one needs a little more cleanup. There's still some of the old soil in here and it's probably full of weeds. I'll have to get my root rake. I think that's pretty good. I think I've got the old soil out. They're rooted quite nicely. The root system's looking really good on this tree. Okay, let's get them back on the bench. I've got two new pots here. I put the old pot that had the weeds in it baking in the sun to kill any weeds. I'll use that for a different tree. So these are different pots. So, my larger tree will be going in this pot. Fits in there quite nicely and the smaller one in this pot and that fits quite nicely too. So I'm not doing any root pruning even though I'm very tempted to, but I'm not. I'm going to keep it, the roots, as they are. And just pot up the tree. So I will need, these drainage holes are very big in the bottom, the mesh, which is built into the pot. It's too big, so I'll put some drainage screens in and start planting the tree. Now I've got to see. The tree will be planted about here. So just a little more soil, build up a mound. Now I can add the tree. I'm going to get these roots as kind of radial as I can without damaging them. They are very tangled like that. They still have to fit in this pod. 
which they do. Now, as far as the height in the pot, that's too high, so get it down a bit. I think that's a better height. Add some soil. And I'll have to work that into the root system. I hear a lot online, people say I use a wooden chopstick because it's easier on the roots and I think that's the opposite is that you want something very smooth which glides past the roots and doesn't tear them. If you have something rough it, it grips the roots like sandpaper and tears that outer layer off the roots. That uh, So I think something smooth like a stainless steel chopstick is better than using a wooden chopstick. I think wooden chopsticks and they grip too much and they can tear your roots. This just sort of glides past them because it's smooth. Which would you rather rubbing on your skin? Something smooth like this or a piece of wood? I would rather something smooth. So I think, you know, that wooden chopstick theory you know, other than the shape of the chopstick is good, but I think the fact that it's made out of wood to be more gentle on the roots is a bit of a wives' tale. I think something smooth is superior. I've always used, you know, either the end of my root rake, which is smooth, like this, or knitting needles, or this stainless chopstick is really good. I don't like to use wood because it's too rough. Okay, I need a little more topping up of soil. Okay, so that tree is planted. It's all ready for watering. Here I go with the water. Okay, that'll do for the first watering. I'll come back and water it like in an hour because all this fur bark and the perlite and the turfus, it takes time for that water to soak into the particles. So when you first repot a tree, be sure to water it really frequently for the first few days because these uh, particles will tend to suck the water in until they're you know, fully humo, uh, what's the word? Fully saturated with water. Okay, so you can see the leaves are drooping right now. So I'm hoping by the end of the day, it perks up and uh, returns to normal. So that's a good indicator. Right now the leaves are drooping. If it does come back within the next day or two, the leaves perk up, you know the roots are back working and they're back and re-established and the tree will be fine. If it continues to sulk like this and then the leaves start turning brown and drop off, you know the repotting operation wasn't a success. So I'll put that one aside now, put it down here in the shade and I'll get tree number two potted up. That is feeling pretty good in here. I think it is ready to be watered. You can see the leaves are starting to go limp on this one also. So again, I'll put it in the shade and I will know either by tonight or tomorrow if the tree's gonna make it or not. I've got the two Ammer Maples down here in the shade. So I'm going to come back tonight and see how they're doing they look a little better to me already, actually. But I'll come back tonight. Um, that'll be in about another three or four hours. And I'll see how they're doing. It's later on in the evening now. The sun will be setting in probably another hour. Let's check up on the maples now. 
So they're still a little droopy, but not too, too bad. I just watered them and it made them droop even more the weight of the water on the leaves. But I think I'll have to update you in future videos to see how these are really doing, to see if they survive their bare rooting without any root pruning, kind of in the wrong time of the season. I had a fantastic day today working in the greenhouse here on these maples. I'll let you know in future episodes how these maples are doing, if they perked up and start growing again. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.